Welcome to Comic Talkers for Comics is Always the Top of Our Discussion. My name is Brandon. I'm William. And I'm Mary. And today we continue on with Creator Spotlight segment. So Mary, why don't you tell the fans a little bit about what our Creator Spotlight segment is? So Creator Spotlight is really our chance to highlight different comic creators, typically a lot of indie comic creators, um, sort of figure out what they're putting out and how they got interested in the medium and what they love about it. Yeah, and today we are honored to be joined by a guy that's not so much, or he is local to Will and I. Um, please welcome to the podcast, Brent from Impound Comics. Brent, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. So yeah, we got a set of questions for you um, to kind of get opened up to the world a little bit more about what got you into imp or creating Impound Comics, got you, got you into the comic book world and kind of see where people can help support you and everything. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, let's start off with just kind of seeing how you got into the comic book world. What were some of your favorite heroes, villains, teams? How did you get into the comic book world? Um, early on, my favorite thing, like as a kid, was Ninja Turtles. So I would just say that was my first, like just into fiction or, you know, sorts. And then Ninja Turtles turned into Power Rangers. And then, you know, Marvel was just always just also there. Um, early 90s where Batman films were a big thing. And um, Spawn was probably one of my first earlier things. I think that was, I was probably maybe, I don't, I don't know how old I was, maybe five, six or seven when, when the first Spawn movie came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Spawn's probably been my favorite since. And uh, then the Hulk. So, um yeah. Turtles to Marvel, man, is kind of what started it. <laughs> uh, That's usually the start for everyone. Like that. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> definitely. But that was a uh, that was more of a time of just being a fan of it. You know, I had no thoughts or dreams of actually creating um, anything. Um, you know, playing a ton of games, watching all the shows. You know, I was only a casual reader. I wouldn't say like I was super heavy into the the actual paperbacks. Um, more now I am now but um yeah that was the beginning of it so I mean what was your inspiration in creating Impound Comics I mean you just told us that you didn't really have any dreams of creating yourself but obviously now you have a physical store location and everything so how did you go from not having any dreams of creating to having a physical storefront for your comics um you know I I, I was always um I would say I've always been a writer. I just wasn't writing uh, comics. So I was writing, um, trying to write like movie scripts or writing like a, uh, wrote novels, full of novels. And then um, not being able to get the scripts adapted, realizing it's a tougher thing than that. I was trying to think of what would be a way to gain an audience so maybe that one day Hollywood would want the movie um, in, the, in the most feasible way was a comic book. Um, that made sense to be able to show that like proof of concept. And I think that light bulb moment came out came on when I was watching uh, the first Black Panther film and uh, thinking how long Black Panther was a comic before it became an actual movie. And um, Ryan Coogler being um, Northern California, but he went to Sac State, um, kind of local. Um, that was the inspiration that made me say, let me just do a comic book instead. Will still dreams of getting the movie. At this point in time, you have many um, comic books under or comic book series under your belt. You have Impound, you have Blast It, Seraf, Lady Monarch, um, Ulan, and many others. Um, what was the inspirations of all these characters that you've created, or how did you come? There's no one answer for that. They were all inspired by other reasonings, other things. I, I usually tell people it's a it's like a melting pot of personal experiences with all of my favorite stuff. Um, but every character has a different reason. Um, originally, it was only supposed to be about Impound. I was kind of taking the Naruto approach. And um, and then it took a long time to get the second book illustrated. So I was just like, well, let me write something. Let me get something else illustrated with somebody else in the meantime. And then it just snowballed, you know what I mean? And then I just started thinking of other characters or opportunities within the Impound story to introduce someone else or highlight someone else and uh, that's just how it happened you know it wasn't it wasn't the plan out the gate i actually have a side question to that so uh, with all the uh, titles that you have that you have been writing and have of all of them what ones would you say that you've had the most enjoyment like you've 
really enjoyed writing the story for and all that? Um, I like, I think I like the Ulan story the most. Um, so, um, that's, that, that's the one I've been telling people. I think everyone's going to love the most. Um, and then I always, my favorite story before Ulan was always Lady Monarch and, um, you know, just different, you know what I mean? Like, I like when I can just feel like it doesn't feel overused. Everything ours has like other stories similar, but uh, it wasn't overused. And then Blasted, it's been exciting just because of the excitement from the public. Um, but that was the hardest thing to write. Um, but now I have it figured out. So it's, it, it's smooth and smooth now. Uh, so what did you find most difficult about writing these comics? I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really look at it as difficult. It's something I just do. Um, so... Difficult. The writing part is not difficult. The harder part is like the promoting, the getting up every day and doing it. But writing, I don't, it's not even, that's just like kind of like what I do kind of thing. And so there's, it's, it's the stories it's cool. just flow out. If I, if I don't, yeah, if I don't, if I'm not inspired to do it, I'm not going to. If it's not something I absolutely love, I'm not going to do it. And it's just simple that way. So I don't have expectations. I don't let people put expectations on my releases when things should be happening and how i just do it for how i would like it to be done and that's that so i don't find a lot of difficulty in the actual writing the next question we have is too for you is how did you get connected with your artist that does all the works for you too internet i mean it's it's where i don't have one artist though we have we have six you know you find them wherever you can um apps like fiverr apps like upwork you know hashtag comic art on Twitter and Instagram, things like that. So not only do you create comics, but uh, you also have anime shorts that are mm. featured as well. Uh, so I was actually kind of curious, uh, what sort of animes uh, are you into? and What kind of animes have somewhat had some inspiration on your comic creation? Uh, um, <laughs> I love Dragon Ball Z and um, I loved um, One Punch Man. And then I know it's not a legitimate anime, but The Last Airbender is probably my favorite just animated series of any kind. But I don't, I'm not that deep. You know, I'm not, I've never seen Demon Slayer, One Piece, uh, My Hero Academia. I've not seen any of those. At least you know the names. <laughs> yeah, oh well, yeah, I know the world. But when I sit down and try to watch anime, usually I, I give up. Um, I've, and I've tried them all <laughs> at some point. <laughs> And all that did was let me realize that I don't like anime like that. Like, I, I was a fan of Dragon Ball Z as a kid growing up, and I think that tricked me into thinking I love anime. And then <laughs> once I went out and explored it, I was like, "This isn't this isn't for me." <laughs> no, but you do you do have the uh, anime shorts, animated yeah, shorts yeah, yeah. for your comics. And so, was, uh, where can people it, it, find those if they're interested in looking at them? Uh, all on our YouTube channel, the Impound Comics YouTube is where they live. And um, it was just more of the style and the popularity that made it like, let's just go that route. One of my illustrators taught himself how to animate. So that's how that happened. Um, and and uh, yeah, we, we continue to add more episodes as we go and uh, eventually hopefully get some sort of big platform deal. So not only do you have an anime for your comics, you also have a video game or a mobile game. Mm -hmm. on for your comics so tell us a little bit about that or tell the fans a little bit about the mobile game um the game is called impound vengeance and it's, it's kind of like a cross i would say between the old school ninja turtles game mixed in with like call of duty zombies where it's a wave game where the higher you go the more show up there's no end to the game um but yeah i got that pretty early i think i had that before even impound two it was definitely before the store and um you know just always trying to think of other me as a consumer, like I said, when I was a kid, I was not really quick to pick up the comic book, but I was quick to pick up the game or watch the show. So I was trying to make sure I was also trying to attract people that were like me as a kid, because trying to only go for readers makes you a lot more niche. Um, so, you know, we want the reading audience, we want the gamer audience, we wanted the uh, anime audience. So what is a feasible way to get these things now? and um, let them live, grow with us, basically. 
Yeah. So we talked a lot about what you have out currently, but do you have anything that's coming down the pipeline that you're excited to be released at this point? Um, yeah, you yeah, know, nothing that's like beyond like blasted. That's probably the biggest, that's where most of the focus is, is his for release in May. Um, but I'm always like trying to think of new characters and different reasonings, but there's nothing that's like uh, so close in production. I can't wait. Um, it's just kind of more like in a brainstorm process. But, you know, we release a new book usually every month. So um, if it's not a new character, it'll just be another installment to a series that already exists. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's always what's next um, in this space. So I want to kind of piggyback off that question, too, is you've talked about Blasted. And mm -hmm. Blasted is one of your new and upcoming you know, characters that you've been promoting. I know you promoted it on TikTok a lot, having lives and everything like that lately. Um, tell us a little bit about Blasted and what fans can expect from this comic. Um, so this comic, the, the first issue is going to be a lot of origin, a lot of him not as Blasted, you know, um, since his power set and reasoning is more unique to most characters where he was born with abilities um, versus acquiring them at some point in his life. We kind of literally have to show the being born until he's an adult um, and the things in his life that happen um, to carve that. But he's, he is a, a demigod of uh, the Mayan god of tattoos, a cat who's an actual deity. Even though Mayans don't have demigods, I had to take some sort of creative, or well, they don't call them that. You know, um, so I had to take some creative uh, direction on that. Um, but um, they have an ability where he can physically bring tattoos or ink things to life. Um, and, and like I said, it still was a lot of just creative that I had to do to give him rules, give him limitations, to bring him from this God tier to being just a hum uh, humanizing him, I guess, if you will. and making it not so ridiculous that if he could just draw whatever he wants, you know what I mean? Why does he, <laughs> why does he have to do anything else? You know, but um, yeah, it, it, it caught fire immediately. And then as we were going, um, or as I was creating it, um, the last thing that I did, I couldn't think of what his name would be. And, um, you know, I ended up having uh, two friends that uh, were actually killed in 2022. So I named him after them. So it became more of an important project in that sense as well. Um, but yeah, you're going to see the human guy for a little while before you see the fully developed version that I've been promoting. We want to thank you for joining us today on this um, Creator Spotlight segment. So tell the fans where they can find you, Impound Comics. Where can they watch your anime? Where can they get the mobile game? Uh, I mean, you could see everything if you would like to just go to impoundcomics.com. But all of our social apps are Impound Comics. Um, and the mobile games is in the App Store. Um, you type in Impound, it will it'll show up. Hopefully, I would be, I'd be upset if it didn't. But um, at Impound Comics for everything. Um, we want to thank Brent for coming on and introducing more Impound Comics to our fan base. Um, as always, you can find Comic Talkers on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Comic Talkers to get all the latest updates. Let us know what you think about Impound Comics. Let us know what your favorite characters are. Get that back to Brent a little bit to kind of see where he can maybe go forward with this team or with these group of superheroes that he has created. Um, as always, you can listen to Comic Talkers on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and many other platforms um, for great comic book and anime content. And as always, my name is Brandon. William. And I'm Mary. May comics always be the top of your discussion.